Hello everybody, my name is Kaukiman and in this week's tutorial we'll be going over the nook and crannies of importing Blender characters to Godot using the GLTF format and all the hardships you may encounter along the way. I actually have a character in the game on which I'm currently working on, which I'm constantly iterating over and re-importing, so I'll also be going over some tips which have improved my workflow. Within this tutorial, we will be going over the different useful options given to us by Blender's GLTF exporter. And then in part two, we will be going over Godot's importer and how to successfully re-import models while working with Godot so that we can get exactly what we need. The following is a list of things which we will cover. Feel free to pause the video and see if any of these things interest you or your project. This is not a tutorial on character creation, 3D modeling or animation. Neither is it about exporting scenes with lights or cameras from Blender to Godot. This only covers exporting characters or objects which you have already created with which you may build a scene with in Godot. Before we start, for your knowledge and so you know what we're dealing with, GLTF stands for Graphics Library Transmission Format or GL Transmission Format, which uses a standard JSON format and was initially released in 2015 and its sequel GLTF2 was released in 2017, so you can see it's quite recent. It's also open source and royalty free and has support for big 3D scenes. It is also quite fast to transfer 3D data. Unfortunately for us Blender users, we do have to click that export button each time we need to do a change as Godot doesn't currently support the dot .blend format unlike Unity. However, trust me when I say this, it's a very small price to pay. First off, let's see the first model we're going to import. This model is a simplistic one, which is rigged and has one animation, which you can see here. It has both inverse kinematics and forward kinematics in the same animation, where I switch between them mid animation by keying the inverse kinematics modifier. You will see that this animation transfers well to our engine. This is due to the GLTF exporter converting everything to forward kinematic. We also have a mirror modifier, which is set prior to the armature modifier to mirror the x-axis. We will see that these also export properly to GLTF. You will also notice that the object is composed of two colors. These are actually two sub-meshes, meaning that we have two materials for the same object, and we will learn to export these properly as well to Godot. Now let's see how to export from Blender to GLTF format. You want to go to File, Export, and hit that GLTF button. Personally, I find myself going through this multiple times, so I just set it to a shortcut. I use Ctrl E, E for export, and set it as my shortcut. To do this, you may go to the file menu, right click, hit assign shortcut, and then press the keys you'd like to assign it to. If you made a mistake when setting your shortcut, you can go to where you just pressed right click, press right click again, and press either remove or change the shortcut. You will then be met with the screen, which has a ton of options. The options panel is marked in red here. Do not be overwhelmed by the number of options, we will go through all of them here. First off, we have the format option. Now, the main two we want to focus on are the embedded and binary. Binary results in a smaller file and is thus faster to load, while the embedded format is bigger and provides no particular benefits except for the better version control since it is in text. I do however recommend exporting to this format, meaning the text format, at least once in your life and take a look at how the text file is structured to get a better understanding of the format. It is in JSON format. Remember that if you know how your tool works, you will often be able to use it better and more efficiently. Alright, next you may or may not want to click remember export settings i do want to turn on so it is checked essentially what this will do is just not reset to the default settings if you reopen your project moving on to the first section out of four drop down lists which is the include list we have the selected objects this means that we will only export those objects which are currently selected in object mode I found myself using this when I had a character which I just needed exporting without any of his gear so that I could export the gear separately, for example. Here however we can just export everything, so we can leave this unchecked. 
With regards to custom properties, neither Godot nor Unity for that matter have support for this, so we can leave them unchecked. As for the lights and cameras, these are for scenes and we do not need them here. Next up is the transform, quite a short section containing just Y up. I remember when I first discovered this, it was euphoric. You, if you're not aware, Blender switches the conventional Y and Z axis and this fixes it on export so that you do not have to rotate the model on import into the engine. Next is the geometry tab and here we have to hit apply modifier so that our mirror modifier is applied. If you have UV coordinates you will also want to export UVs. If you don't, do not have any UVs in your scene then it just won't export any. No reason to have this unchecked really. Normals are for the directions that the vertices in your mesh are facing, similar here with the tangents, so we will check them. With regards to vertex colors, unless you are using these in Blender, you probably won't need them. Now, here comes the interesting part, materials. Personally, I don't like exporting materials, however, since we have two submeshes, we will have to export them, otherwise we will not have the separation of the top part of our mesh being separate from the bottom half. Instead, we would end up with one material for the entire mesh, which is not what we want. We will see this in part 2 when we see the model in Godot. For now, however, here it is in Godot, where we have two materials rather than just one, and we can apply each one separately. Back to Blender, the next option is images. Unless you're doing something with these in Blender, you won't really need them. Personally, I prefer doing the materials in Engine, so I'll leave this turned off. As for compression, we do not really want this unless we have super large files, as this would result in slower encoding and decoding. If you do not want any Blender materials, but still want multi-meshes, here's what you do. Go to your object material and hit the X button next to both of them. Make sure there is now a zero next to the materials. To make sure this worked, reload the Blender file and see that the materials are gone. Now you will be happy to know that the vertices that you assigned these empty materials do still have their respective materials separate, so you can sleep well tonight knowing that you can export safely without having annoying materials running around your project. Lastly is the animation. Firstly is the use of current frame. Now you can press this or not, it doesn't work. You will always get the model in Godot at the current frame. We should limit our playback range so that our animations get trimmed to their respective start and end frames. The sampling rate you can leave at 1, otherwise you may lose information in your animation. We also want to sample our animations, otherwise the animations just won't get exported. If you created animations in the NLA editor, you might also want these NLA strips. As for the formation bones, you will see that I have the IK bone that is not the formation bone. Hence, we check the formation bones only so that this IK bone will not get exported, giving us a cleaner export with less bones. If you want to include your non deform bones, then you may uncheck this option. Next, we have shape keys. In this specific model, we do not have any shape keys, however, we will leave this checked for our next model. In case anyone stops watching this video here, I will state this loud and clear now. You cannot export a model which has both shape keys and modifiers. That includes the armature modifier. This isn't a Godot thing, this is a Blender thing. I was very sad upon learning this, but it is what it is. And you should know about it. Alright, so lastly is skinning, which allows our vertices to be affected by more than four bones. Turn this off as it provides no benefit to us as Godot like Unity, supports a maximum of 4 bones per vertex. However, Unreal Engine does support a maximum of 8, which might be of interest to you. One thing I have to mention is that if you played around with the curves in the Blender animation, these will be successfully exported using this exporter and you will be able to see them in Godot. In this animation, I use the bounce curve here and you will see in part 2 how these got exported successfully. So the next thing we will do is to go over the second model, which we'll export to GLTF. What makes this different is the fact that it has no animations, but it has two shape keys. Here we see one where we make the top bigger and another which rotates the bottom square. Notice once more that 
we do not have any modifiers due to not being able to export a model with both modifiers and shape keys. Then once we are in Kadot, we will see our shape keys right here, although their values of 1 to 0 will be reversed. For exporting, we can use the previous settings, which we have already accounted for shape keys. Some final notes, make sure that the inverse kinematics bones are turned on before you export and that you've keyed these well. Even before you start animating an animation, make sure that these are turned on, otherwise you may run into some problems. Right, that concludes today's tutorial, so that in the next week's tutorial we will be going over the next steps to successfully import our exported file to Godot, as well as the hardships that come with re-importing. Trust me though, the hardships aren't really big, or at least they're not as hard as Unity especially when it comes to adding new animations. I am sorry I couldn't fit it all into one video, however, since I am working a 40 hour job now, I'll probably not have as much time as I'd like. The past two weeks I haven't uploaded either, since I was waiting for a new microphone, which has now arrived and is hopefully noticeable, and I really didn't want to upload knowing that the quality will not, will not be as good as I want it to be. That said, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.